Two 2024 presidential candidates touching down in New York for two very different reasons. Former President Trump attending the wake of a slain NYPD officer, Jonathan Diller. The 31-year-old was killed in the line of duty by a career criminal who has been arrested more than 20 times. Diller leaves behind a wife and a one-year-old son. President Trump spending time with his wife today and says this tragedy should never have happened. It's such a sad, sad event, it's such a horrible thing, and it's happening all too often, and we're just not going to let it happen. We just can't 21 times arrested this thug, and uh, the person in the car with him was arrested many times, and they don't learn because they don't respect they don't, they're not given the respect. The police are the greatest people we have. There's nothing and there's nobody like them, and this should never happen. We have to stop it. We have to stop it. We have to get back to law and order. We have to do a lot of things differently because this is not working. President Biden is also in New York. He did not attend the wake. He's in town for a big fundraiser tonight. He spent the afternoon taping a podcast with some celebrities and also Obama and Clinton. Liberal soft on crime policies have been under the microscope. The two men in the car during that fatal traffic stop had 35 charges between them. But the White House is shifting the blame, saying this yesterday. President Biden is deeply grateful for the sacrifices police officers make to keep our community safe. Uh, this shooting is yet another painful reminder of the toll of gun violence, that what it's, in, what it's doing to inflict uh, on families and our communities and our nation. Uh, and that's why the president signed more than two dozen executive actions. That's why we're able to pass a bipartisan agreement to uh, deal with the gun violence that we're seeing in this country. And today, Corinne Jean-Pierre is pointing fingers at Republicans. Surge under the previous administration, uh, which repeatedly attempted to cut the cops program, all of their budgets uh, targeted that they that that key funding for the police and congressional Republicans just proposed doing it again. So this is a president. This is a Biden Harris administration have done the polar opposite, taking decisive action from the very beginning to fund the police and achieving a historic reduction in crime under his leadership. Brian Kilmeade of Fox & Friends was able to talk with former President Trump today. Uh, that full interview will air tomorrow on Fox & Friends, but for a little sneak peek, watch this. They wanted me to be there, and I wanted to be there, and I came in from Florida. And uh, what a family, the Diller family. And uh, they lost a, a hero, really. I mean, just a hero. They're devastated. The, the family is devastated. The police force is devastated the whole country feels this way and uh it's happening more and more and it's really a lack of respect for law and order and we have to have law and order back in our country jesse i think in years past we might have been shocked that suspects had 35 priors between them and that they were out on the streets but now it's just like routine like we expect that that's to be the case they all have priors and they're all being allowed to come out and prey on people. This guy's got attempted murder charges. He has gun charges. He has assault. He has drug distribution. There's no way this guy should have been out, but he was. And now the Diller family is in shock. And it's just tr it's such a tragedy because it doesn't need to happen. So today you have a framing. You have... Joe Biden making it rain right over there at Radio City, and Donald Trump's at a funeral for a slain cop. We've seen this before at the border. I don't know if it's luck, timing, good instincts. Joe Biden's at the border, can't get, really get his footing, and Donald Trump's there at the wall doing his thing. And this has happened a couple times. Trump zipped in during East Palestine right before the president went in. Uh, he's at UFC fights, college football. His memes are pretty slick. So... When you compare these two people, it really gives the country a choice. One man is paying respects, the other man is asking for money. I know the timing's strange, but it's not even about politics for Trump, because if you know him, you know how much he cares about law enforcement. He has a huge heart, he wants to be there. And so this isn't even really political for him. But Biden's derelict, because if I were the president, I would get on the phone with Hochul, Adams, Alvin Bragg, and I would say, are you kidding me? 21 priors? What are you doing? I'd call the city council chief. What are you doing? Whatever you're doing, racism, equity, forget about it. Fix the problem, 
get it together. And it doesn't even you're costing lives and you're costing Joe Biden reelection. If that's the way they need to hear that, fine. But this is destroying this country right now. And people have had it. Uh, there, Jessica, there was a report that President Biden did call Mayor Adams, but it was described as offering condolences, not necessarily saying what's happening up there in terms of can you get Alvin Bragg to do what he should be doing, which is prosecuting crime. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what happened on the phone or what the conversations are. None of us can be, but this does feel like a missed opportunity, not only in expressing the level of condolences that this family deserves for something like this, um, but also that you have a plan to rectify the problem so that it won't happen again. Because the judge pointed out the other day that uh, traffic stops are the most dangerous uh, time for a police officer because they don't know what they're walking into. And if you are going to have people on the street who arguably should be in jail, um, Something bad is going to happen within that car, especially if you have 35 priors um, between them. I, I think it's deeply depressing. I think that there is a moment to talk about your record, and this was not it. I mean, there's lots of evidence that you could always point to to say, I invested this or I did that. But it's just a sad day. No, not today. Yeah. Judge, the support for law enforcement used to break fairly evenly between the parties. Um, in 2016, the average donations was from police was 57%. In 2020, it was 77%. So what happened in between was you had the defund the police movement and to think that that hasn't had an effect is absolutely not true. Look, we had four presidents in New York City today. Three of them were here uh, for a political reason. Three of them were here to raise money. Three of them were here to make sure that the fourth president didn't become president again. And one president, one president alone, was here to pay respect to a fallen police officer who should never have died in the line of duty. Now, you see that front line in front of that funeral home. I've been in that line many times. And what you have are the law enforcement community who know who supports them. They know who doesn't support them. And today, when Joe Biden landed at 1.30, he could have gone to that wake. He did a podcast with some celebrity. That's more important to him. Raising money is more important. Joe Biden is about America last. Donald Trump is about America first. Joe Biden is about opening the border in sanctuary cities and recidivist crimes. Donald Trump is about law and order and supporting the police. And I have to tell you, I am so fed up with Corinne Jean-Pierre. We're going to blame the gun. Did that gun walk out of that car and shoot Officer Jonathan Diller? No. Dirtbags had those guns. Both of them had illegal guns. And stop telling me about all your gun legislation because I don't want to hear about it. I've got 32 years in this business. They commit crimes with illegal guns. They don't give a damn what legislation you pass and how many clips you can, and bullets in your clip in your magazine. That's a bunch of nonsense to them. Both of them had illegal loaded guns in that car and were ready, willing, and able to use it in a city where they're not going to be held. One was in prison for attempted murder, all right? And he's out on bail for gun possession. Are you kidding me? Right. This is the fall of a civilized society. When we don't respect police and law enforcement, when we don't recognize it's time to take it to the Democrats, it's time to put it to them. They are responsible for this nonsense social justice, bail reform, which is nonsense, and all of these progressive DAs. Hochul should be getting rid of the DAs that aren't prosecuting crimes. Hochul should be moving for legislation to protect New Yorkers. I'm sick of sanctuary cities. I'm sick of illegals getting protected in sanctuary cities when they commit crimes. At least Americans, when they commit crimes, they go to jail, but not the illegals. Enough of this. If you don't want to lose this country, there's only one man who's going to say David. Greg, on gun control, it does seem to be the default position. Well, it's it's also not about the the number of murders. It really is the story is about the number of preventable ones of both police and civilians. We're seeing people getting killed by people 
who should have been put away, whether they should have been in jail or mental institutions. And gun violence, as uh, KGP states, it's not like this uh, generic category, like car accidents or accidental overdoses. There's a criminal force directly involved in gun violence. There's something bad happening and intentionally done. So it's not about the gun. A gun did not push that innocent man in front of the subway. That was a, that was a, a and killed him. That was a law or a, a, a no bail law that allowed that guy out and then he pushed that innocent person in front of the subway. There was no gun there. All of this really, it, it goes back, this recidivism, okay? It all goes back, it's the fruits of the George Floyd mythology, mm -hmm. which allowed this radical ideology uh, that deems any attempt at trying to preserve a civil society as racist. So we're experiencing the teardown of a, of a system and we're watching its replacement, which is chaos uh, that is disguised as social justice. And in this war on society, Officer Diller was a casualty, right? The ideas pushed by elites got him killed and they're far removed from those consequences. So, the, no, so and, and meanwhile, these murderous thugs in the filter of the oppressed versus the oppressor are seen as more important than the people who protect our streets, a young man who had a, a wife and a baby. And I know that there are people that will say Trump is politicizing this death. No, he's simply noticing it. That's all he's doing. Uh, uh, he, and he's noticed law enforcement before he was in, in, uh, in politics. Uh, people have stories about that. Uh, it is weird how Joe Biden only recognizes the dead if they're part of a trendy movement. Only then he could be bothered. And I think what you can call that is politics. And a reminder, this program, a note, don't miss former President Trump's exclusive interview with Brian Kilmey. That's tomorrow on Fox and Friends at 6 a.m. Eastern. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.